Hello and welcome to Mirror Talk. We have moments where we just have to pause. Just pause and take a break and reflect on life. Remember, you are strong, you are enough, you are capable, you are blessed and you are loved. Your moment of greatness starts now. This episode's guest is an aspiring business owner and an entrepreneur. Even as a child, he has been aspiring and dreaming that everyone should have his or her own side hustle, either as a hobby or with the intention of replacing your primary source of income. Thank you for joining me today, John. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me, Toby. I'm excited to be here. Can you tell me about yourself and about Paragon also? I give you the basics. So I'm a family man. I have three children, uh, an amazing girlfriend. My primary focus, the thing that falls right at the top of my priority list every single day is kind of helping my family. And then what falls just below that is helping other people. Of course, it's a priority as, of mine as a man. That's the role I've decided to take on is to look after my family, to make sure they're happy, they're healthy, they're provided for, you know, the bills are paid and whatnot. Based on the person that I am, my experiences throughout life, I've kind of gotten to a place now where it's, it's incredibly important for me to make sure everyone else around me is happy and smiling. When other people smile, we all know it's contagious. When one person smiles, everybody else smiles. So I don't like to see other people in pain. And for me, kind of where Paragon was born from was I suffered a certain amount of pain, nothing too traumatic. But basically, when I worked a typical nine to five, I was following a path that society had set out for me, where you basically, uh, you go to school, then you get a job and you get married, you have three children and you buy a house and you buy a car. That was... That was the path that society had set out for me. And I decided that wasn't, it, it just didn't make sense to me. Of course, I went, I have got the house and I've got the three children. I'm not married though. That may, that may come later. I'm not sure yet. Um, but I didn't like that the, the, the path was kind of set out in advance. I thought it was up to me to decide. So Paragon was kind of born uh, in a way to basically offer other people an alternative to that path. Mm. If they decide they don't want to work 40 hours per week or 50 hours per week until they are 70 years old. That's mm. perfectly okay. There are other options. And Paragon was born in an attempt to offer those options to other people. So I spend a lot of time and effort helping other people discover what their options are and kind of put them into practice. Yes, that, that, that's amazing. That's great. So for, for, for a layman, what's, what is your definition of side hustle? Uh, basically, a side hustle is something you can build alongside your primary income. So one of the issues with building a business is it creates a certain amount of insecurity. If you quit your job and go to build a business and you give it 100%, you still got the risk that the business might not work or it might take a little bit longer to start working. And obviously, if you've quit your job, you don't have that income coming in anymore. So a side hustle is something you can build alongside working your typical nine to five. You know, even if it's just one hour per day, you can build a viable side hustle. And you build it up slowly over time until you get to a point where the income from your side hustle is similar or slightly better to your normal day job. Then you can consider reducing your hours at the day job. Obviously, if you love your job, then fantastic. You can stick with that. That's entirely up to you. But not many people are blessed enough to love their job. So you build the side hustle alongside and eventually it gets to a level where you are comfortable you can then quit your job altogether and just focus on what is now your your primary income. It's no longer a side hustle. It is your main yes. priority hustle. What, what kind of businesses can I start or what kind of businesses can I have as a second source of income or a passive source of income? There's an incredibly good one that's very popular these days. It's called podcasting. Uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a, honestly, podcasting is amazing. And about 30 minutes ago, I posted a post on Facebook asking to hire two more assistants to help me find podcasts because I think there is a huge potential with podcasts. But aside from that, um, there is almost no limit to what kind of businesses can be built. So part of my coaching program is I help people discover what I refer to as their value. And that's basically their hobbies, their interests, their passions, and their talents. We write all of these down. So to give you a quick guide, a brief summary is we write down 10 hobbies, 10 things that you like to do. 
maybe even things that you like to do as a child, maybe even if it's something you've not done for a while. We write these down as quickly as you can, whatever pops up on the top of your head. Then by looking at these, we write down five things that you are good at. So for me, it might be, I like racing. Um, I'm good at coaching. I'm good at problem solving. I'm good at parenting. And, you know, I, I don't know. I'm good at spinning a basketball on my finger. I can spin a basketball on my finger. So you write five things you are good at. And then you write two or three things that you are great at. And so for me, it would be coaching, problem solving, and go-karting. These are probably the three things that I'm best at. Parenting mm. comes a, a close fourth, but them three are probably the best things. And then from this list of information, you can have a look and basically think in the back of your mind, are any of these things here marketable? So believe it or not, even spinning a basketball on your finger, there's one video on YouTube that was posted a year ago, and it has nearly a million views. This 725,000 people have gone to YouTube and search how to spin a basketball on my finger. So even someone who thinks that's incredibly easy to do now, you know, I, for me, I just spin it, it lands on my finger and I keep it going. It's, it's really easy. I would never consider making money from that. But you can create a simple YouTube video and nearly a million of people have seen it in, in just one year. And there are hundreds of videos on this. So you can monetize almost anything. So originally, the side hustle plan was to be able to teach people to monetize what they love, what they enjoy, and what their passions are. So if you like running, there are ways to monetize that. If you like uh, car racing, there are ways to monetize that. If you like speaking and talking and being on videos, there are ways to monetize that. You can monetize almost anything. And that's kind of what I spend time with people, trying to figure out what their solution will be, uh, sorry, what their value will be. And then we figure out a solution. And that's basically what you are going to offer to the world, what your product will be. Will it be video blogging? Are you going to provide a service? Are you going to sell a product? Are you going to provide coaching? Uh, if it is a product, will it be digital or will it be physical? There's countless things that it could be. So I don't just offer one business model and say this is the perfect one because the reality mm -hmm. is what might be a perfect business model for you will not be the perfect business model for someone else. So I help them discover that and then I help them take it to five figures and then we look at some separate options to help them scale it to six figures if it is a business model that is capable of six figures. Yeah, that's great. You've, you've answered my next question already. Good. I was about to ask you, yeah, I was about to ask you, like, um, <laughs> that was, what's the best and the most suitable, um, you know, side also for me? How can I, you know, determine that um, the, the most suitable, the most tailored out side business for myself? I would write down, even just quickly off the top of your head, uh, maybe mm. set a little timer, give yourself 30 seconds, you press the buzzer and you write down as many hobbies as you can think. Then the buzzer goes and you stop and then you write down the, probably the top five things that you are good at and then you write the top two or three things that you are great at. Obviously, if you can get a business model that you are great at and it's a hobby of yours, not only do you have a talent for it, but it's something you love, it's something you have a passion for. And the problem with most businesses, the reason a large portion of businesses fail is because every single business has good days and bad days, no matter what the business. So there'll be certain periods of time where there will be obstacles. There will be certain things that pop up that you didn't expect that make things difficult. You know, you might struggle with lead generation. You might struggle with sales. You might struggle with the website. You might struggle with hiring employees. There are certain things that make it difficult. And if you don't have a passion for that, that business, it's incredibly easy to just say, I'm done. I'm out. I quit. It's not for me. But if you if you really, really love that business, if it's a passion of yours, it's easier to stick with it and see through those bad days and you can kind of work through that and then the rest of it's good. But it will happen. Every single business has tricky moments. and But for the most part, it should be good. So it helps if you love it. So if you can write those things down and come up with something that you love. I hope podcasting yeah. is, you know, you obviously enjoy podcasting enough to do it. I, I think yeah. podcasting is amazing, you know, especially as a business owner. It's an incredibly useful way to generate, basically build a network of people. Yes, that's true. That's correct. So, um, you know, you made mention of, you know, side hustle is what you do beside your daily source of um, daily job or your main or primary source of income. You know, sometimes these premises of income could be very tasking, very demanding, very challenging. And now you want to add um, a side business to it. Um, how do you how do you, you know manage both of them properly? That you before as in how do you manage both of them in a way that you don't get you know burned out or you know get um, you know stressed out? So I agree. So if you are in a position where you may possibly get burnt out, first of all that tells me you don't love your job. 
you know, you are not passionate about your job. If it is contributing towards you getting burnt out, uh, you're not passionate enough about it. So you should probably look at alternative options. So it's possible that in the short term, it may be trickier because you have to find the extra time. But it all depends on whether it's high enough on your priority list. So some people, not all people, once they finish their day job, they will go to the pub or they will go home and sit on the couch and they will watch Netflix or they will read a book or they will go upstairs to bed and watch some movies or, you know, they do things that don't move them forward in life. And that's okay. You know, we all need those things. We need to find a certain balance. We have to do the things that we enjoy that where we can slow down and just chill out. That's perfectly okay. But if you want to build a side hustle, at least in the short term, maybe for the first 30 days, you might have to sacrifice some of the Netflix time. You might have to sacrifice watching that movie once a week and put that time into building your side hustle, for example. Um, but I agree, it is tricky around a day job. Um, I built my businesses not while in a day job. Um, it was when I lost my last day job, I then decided I was going to step into the world of building my own business. And it was incredibly difficult because I didn't have people around me to coach me. I didn't have people around me to show me what to do uh, and what steps to take. So it was incredibly tricky. And I learned a lot along the way. You know, I've learned a hell of a lot, which is why I find it much easier now. And I'm in a position where I can teach other people. And I have done successfully now for the last few months. You know, I've had some amazing clients and we've achieved some incredible results. I've met some fantastic people. We've got some really, really great results. But I think, I think every single one of them works a day job. I can't think of any right now. There might be some that don't work a day job, but everyone that I can think of right now has a day job or had a day job previously while building their side hustle. But because it was something they enjoyed anyway, it was easy to find the time for it. And it was easy to find the money if they needed money to be able to do it as well. So yes, it's going to take a little bit of time. And if you are working 50 or 60 hours per week, it's going to be trickier for you. But it's even more important for you to do this because you are working so much. You simply, I think it's incredibly silly and not very smart to work 60 hours per week until you are 70 years old. You know, it just, it doesn't make sense. And we all have this idea that one day I will become the owner of the company. One day I will work my way up and become the CEO. And then I only have to work 20 hours per week. But the reality is by the time you get to the top, if you are the type of person to get to the top, you now have to work 50, 60, 70 hours per week. And your phone is constantly on. You receive emails every minute of every single day. You know, your entire life becomes about that career. So, yes. so you, you've made mention of some, of, some um, advantages of side hustling already. But for my friends out there that always tell me, um, I'm, I'm okay with my nine to five job every week, every day. Um, can you mention some other advantages of um, having a side business or um, being an entrepreneur of your own? Yeah, so some people are blessed enough to have a job that they enjoy, and that's amazing. Uh, you know, I've heard people say in the past, if you have a job you enjoy or love, you never have to work a day in your life. It's not considered work because you enjoy it. It's much easier. That's fantastic. You know, I'm incredibly happy for those people. That's great. I never had that as a person, and so I, I went seeking other options. But for those people who are in that position, a large portion of them may be thinking they like their job, and it's secure, they're happy staying there, but they don't quite have the lifestyle they expected to achieve at this point. They don't quite have the income they were hoping for. So it might be a good job, but they wouldn't mind that extra one holiday per year. They wouldn't mind a slightly bigger house or they wouldn't mind a, a nicer car. Maybe they want a seven-seater car to put all the kids in the back. Maybe they want to be able to contribute to some uh, poverty-stricken countries or maybe they want to be able to donate to their favorite charity you know, they can even drop their hours at the work. So they still do the job, but not as many hours. There are lots of options with it. But for the most part, people want a little bit of extra money. And if you can help other people, if you can create a business where you serve other people, you are kind of curing that fix because people want to help other people. It's, it's human nature. We do want to help other people. If you can do that and make a little bit of extra money at the same time, so you can go on holiday or buy the nice things, if that's what you want then why would you not want to do that? You know, go for it. You already have a job you enjoy. Why not have the rest of your life that you can enjoy with a little bit of extra money? Money doesn't buy happiness, but it certainly buys a nice holiday once per year or, you know, a little trip away or something nice for yourself. 
Yeah, that's right. I, w- one, one thing I've learned from you, or two things actually, um, is that it's about passion and time. Um, you have to love your job and love the um, side business, the side hustle that you have, and also create time for both of them, have adequate time or sacrifice time for both of them. But um, what happens after, uh, you know, I found this um, great business, side business I want to do. I'm so passionate about it. I love my day job also. But um, the side business or the side hustle um, is failing over time. It's failing. I'm not making profit from it. And um, I, I don't know. I'm just getting, you know, a little bit discouraged from it. Um, what's your advice from someone like me? What should I do at this point? Should I dump this side business? Should I persevere? How long should I persevere? And you know, how should I go about it if I'm not making profit? From it, it depends on what your definition of persevere is. If you're going to continue doing the same thing each day, the same things that haven't worked in the past, then no, you're wasting your time. You need to do something different. If you, you know, the definition of what is it? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. Everybody around the world seems to make it look so easy. It's simple. You just you do this and you post here and then people come and buy things from you. You know, that's that's what you see. And then all your friends are driving nice cars and they've got the big house and the family looks great. But the reality is most people that are on Facebook, they only post the good stuff on Facebook. They don't share the trials and tribulations that come with, with running a business. But it's incredibly correct. You know, there are going to be struggles. But if you are in a position where you are stale and you're kind of just flat and you're not making progress, you need to look at other options. And I found the best option for that is to find somebody who has achieved what you want to achieve and pay them to show you how they did it. You know, you want to find people that have a reputation, people that are genuine, uh, that you know as real people, not people that just have a nice post on Facebook and make everything look great. You know, there are people who, uh, let's say, let's say you want to become a coach, for example, like me. There are coaches who teach people how to be coaches. They teach you how to do it in a certain way. They teach you how to create your own uh, group coaching sessions, how to handle one-on-one sessions, how to create modules, uh, you know, video modules and written modules. They teach you how to do this in a way that will earn you an income. If it's podcasting, for example, I imagine there are people who teach you how to do podcasts in a way, or they teach you how to brand it in a certain way, or they teach you how to find the best guests, guests that have the best following. So, I mean, me, for example, I've got nearly 5,000 friends on Facebook. I've got an email list of just over 10,000 people, and my audience is growing is growing incredibly often. But there are people out there who have LinkedIn profiles and Instagram profiles with hundreds of thousands of people. If you can brand yourself in a certain way and position yourself as the best podcast around, uh, people want to be on your show. People like to talk about themselves. People want to be on podcasts. You just have to be able to position yourself like that and people will come to you. But I'd suggest finding the right people who can teach you, people who have something that they can offer. And yes, you know, every business transaction is an exchange of value. You give them a small fee usually, and they teach you what they know. And you have to do that. Otherwise, you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, when you say perseverance, nothing is going to change. You know, no one's going to come down with a magic hand and just make your business amazing. It's it's entirely up to you. Uh, And obviously, you can seek help from other people. But everyone's sat there waiting for the lucky break. They're waiting for something magical to happen to just fix everything. And it's not. It's, it's up to me and you. We, we, control, we control our businesses. We control our life. It's entirely up to you. Certain things will happen outside of our control. There's nothing we can do about that. But it's 100% our responsibility to make sure we keep moving forwards. And if you don't want to move forwards anymore, uh, then it's perfectly okay to accept I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to go do something else instead. Do you have words of wisdom for someone who wants to start a business and does not know how to go about it? Like you're a coach. I come to you. I want to start, I have this great business idea, but I just don't know how to go about it. What should I do? So you have two options, really. So you can figure out what the business idea is going to be based on the couple of bits that I've shared today. So if you write down your hobbies, what you're good at and what you are great at, that should give you some ideas and some inspiration. Maybe you already have an idea of what a business model should be. Mm. The most important thing is just go do it. Just go bloody do it. Absolutely no reason to sit and wait. You know, nothing's going to change. Just go start. Now, you can go at this alone or you can find somebody to help you. You can go and hire a coach who can help you get your results faster, more efficiently, 
They can save you a ton of time. They can save you an absolute ton of money. I've spent, God, I don't know how much money I've spent that I've wasted because I was trying different things. Whereas if I just hired a coach in the beginning, I would have saved so much money and so much time, so much time. And ultimately, I would have been able to help more people. So I suggest just do it. And don't be one of those people that are perfectionists. Don't go and sit on your website, tweaking your logo, changing the color, changing the font. Don't sit on the website and and change the background color and mess about with your profile picture because none of that makes you money. When you build a business, everything you do should be leading you towards moving the business further forward. It should either be generating you an income or at least opening the doors for you to be able to generate income. You should spend 80% of your time on activities that make you money. If you're spending 80% of your time on tweaking your logo and your website and printing business cards and printing flyers and getting hoodies with your name uh, on it and, and caps with your name, you're wasting the time and you're wasting money. That doesn't make you any money. You have to do things that do make you money. And ultimately, that's that's what a business is. You know, It's an exchange of value. We run businesses to make money and hopefully we help other people in the process. As a coach and you are the owner of Paragon Hustle, if I come to you, for your service, or what am I expecting to get from you? Uh, ultimately, to find yourself after a short period of time in a better position than you are today. That is the ultimate goal. You know, I even have a guarantee where if I cannot give you a positive ROI after you've paid me, so not only do you get the money back, uh, you know, you earn it through your clients or whatever it is that you do, and a positive ROI that you can rinse and repeat. I give my clients, I've never had to do it yet, but I give my clients a full refund and I give them an extra 500 out of my own pocket. And the reason I do that is because I know it does work. There are conditions that you have to implement what I teach you. So you have to go through the steps and then there are some uh, one-on-one coaching that we do and stuff. So if we go through all of that and you are not able to make a profit, not only am I a bad coach, but I am willing to give you, you know, I've, I've said in the past, I will give people a full refund and 500 out of my own pocket. And because I put that guarantee there, it gives people that extra bit of security to know Johnny's serious and Johnny's very confident in what he teaches. So they're more happy to move forward with me. And I've never had to do it. You know, people have, we, we so my plan is the first 30 days, the program's called 30 Days to Profit. We spend the, thir- the first 30 days figuring out what your business is. So the business model, the solution, what your value is, who your ideal client is, uh, where your client is. And then maybe if you put in together a website, we do that. If you want a sales funnel, we do that. And I give you all my website templates, my funnel templates, my scripts, you know, my uh, video sales letter templates, whatever you need. I, I give everything that I've used to build a business. So you've got everything you need. And over the first 30 days, we put everything together. So on the 31st day, you have a full business. At that point, we spend the next 30 days hiring your first client, you know, finding your first client or finding your first sale or whatever it is that earns you a profit. And you learn then the steps you need to take that you found the first client and then you can just rinse and repeat. So then you can go and find your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth. Uh, and then if need be, if any obstacles pop up in your business, you know, something might pop up like your website breaks or um, maybe there's some legalities that you need to do. Um, you know, if, if anything pops up, people can come back, touch base with me, uh, either message me or we jump on a call and I'm always happy to help. So that's kind of how we do it. The first 30 days is building you a business. The next 30 days is learning how you are going to make a profit with that. And then you can go and do your thing. Just rinse and repeat every day, every week, as much as you like. So no matter what kind of business I want to start, Johnny is able or Paragon also is able to coach me through the first 30 days to to start in the business exactly so i take my clients from zero from absolutely nowhere and i have Mm -hmm. hired clients that already have businesses but they are struggling um but everything that is in place to be able to teach someone who has absolutely no business they have no idea not even an inkling of what business model to run and i take them from there all the way to having a profitable business and then teach them how they can make a profit every single day or every single week they can go ahead and make a profit that's the goal. So how can, how can we get across to you? How can my friends, the listeners, get across to Paragon also or to Johnny? And find me on Facebook. You know, Have a look for John Paragon. There's not too many of us. We are pretty rare, so you should be able to find me. Just look for the guy in the cap. I'm normally always wearing the cap, although not as glittery as the one I'm wearing today. Um, so either have a look for me on Facebook or you can check out one of my websites. So the best one probably to check out is Paragon30. So if you search for Paragon30.com, 
Uh, at the moment, I'm currently installing a new video, uh, which gives you a brief, almost what I've, I've explained today, but in kind of video format. So we go over a few things and help people discover what their business model should be. And then uh, if they want to, they can jump on a free call with me. And I basically look at everything they've got. I look at their business idea. I look at their potential market. And I explain whether I think they can make five figures from this or six figures. And I give them the option. If they want to go through with the coaching, that's perfectly fine too. But if not, I give them so much value that they can go and build a business on their own if they want to. Obviously, the coaching helps them do it faster and more securely and more sustainably. But if they don't want to pay for it, that's okay. They get plenty of value for free. Yes. So one, one last question. Um, just, just before the last question, um, all this information will be in the show notes for this episode. So anyone who's interested could just click on the link, then it lands on your Facebook page or on paragon30.com to get more information about you. So the, the, the last question is much, something much more personal. Um, you, you have these businesses and um, you know, you're a coach and you have three kids. How do you, how do you manage all of this together effectively well? It's in- incredibly easy, to be honest. You know, I've, so I speak to a few people about this and the time that I work each day is minimal. So I only have a handful of clients. I keep a, a, a group that's big enough that, that I enjoy, but not so big that I can't keep up with it. So I only have a small group. So usually my routine is on weekdays, Monday to Friday, the children go to school. So I wake up and take them to school. So I'm normally home. So I work from home now, obviously, uh, the current world situation with the pandemic. I work from home now. So um, I work from 9 a.m. until about 12.30. So I work three and a half hours. I go and have my lunch and then I rest for a bit. And then my children finish school at three o'clock. Now, usually I don't go back to work again from there. I may answer a few messages. You know, I may get some messenger uh, on Facebook or some text messages or some emails. I may answer a couple of them throughout the evening. But for the most part, I just work from 9 a.m. till 12.30. And that's all I do. Um, the rest of, you know, the rest of the week is is pretty easy. And I've got plenty of time with the kids, with the family. I get to go do all of my hobbies. So I probably go racing twice per week when we're not in a current pandemic. Um, at the moment, I can't do any of that. So I'm sulking a little bit. But yeah, so so for the most part, on weekends, I do a little bit of work. I do as much as I want on weekends, to be honest. You know, I've, I've worked a few hours today. I've probably done four hours today, which is a lot for me on a weekend. Um, but my little boy was away. He'd gone to visit some family. Um, so I, I decided to get a little bit of work done. You know, I, was, I, I had a few calls booked with some of my clients and things. So it's easy. Once you, once you step out of the nine to five and you have a business model that makes you a profit, and helps other people, you can work as many hours as you want. I've got, so I've got one of my clients, for example, uh, my client, Ben, within just a couple of days of doing my coaching, he went and launched a, uh, basically he does vehicle performance tuning. So he's a vehicle performance specialist with just in a few days of, of doing my coaching. And he probably works four hours per week now. So people reach out to him. So he's got a, he's got a website where people can input their name, uh, their phone number, their location, their vehicle registration, and uh, their postcode. And then once he's got that information, he's got a tool where he can check if he can tune their car, if he can increase the performance on it. And he basically sends them a text message saying, here's what I can do for your car. Here's what it will cost. And here's my diary so you can book me in. That's it. People come and find him. And he's got a small army of friends and family who go and make referrals because he gives them a little commission for doing so. So he only works four hours per week. He gets somebody who books to go do a vehicle tuning performance, a performance tuning, and then he drives to their address. Usually they're pretty local. He spends an hour, two hours or three hours there and drives home and earns himself a nice little weekly wage. And he just, it's a couple of hours per week. It's, you know, as long as you have the right business model, those people who work 40 or 60 hours per week in a business, usually they don't have a business. They have a job working for themselves. If you're working that many hours, you normally you're just doing that thing where you're persevering, trying to find something that's going to change it. Most people who have a viable business that has a profitable business model, you can just work one hour, two hours, three hours. My previous business that I sold not so long ago, I got that to a point where I just had a two hour call once per week on a Friday where I spoke with my team. So I had, I had a team of developers, virtual assistants, my employees. Um, I just jumped on a call every Friday 
uh, and we had a two-hour call approximately. Sometimes it went slightly over, and that was it. And then they went and did their thing, and if any issues popped up, they might send me an email, but for the most part, they just waited till the next week. But that did take me a few years to build up, um, and at first I did struggle with that business until I started hiring different coaches, um, and then I kind of got it to a, a very high level, and I realized I wanted to automate most of the business. So it was just two hours every week, incredibly easy. That sounds very promising for someone who wants to start a business. So um, coming to you, then one can one be able to get you know or learn about these business models, the the best business mo- um, model that works perfectly or much much uh, much more suitable for that person, right? Yep, yep, exactly. So I mean to give you. It doesn't always work like that because it depends on what you want to do. So there's a young guy who lives in London, um, and I was on a call with him today. An amazing guy, amazing character. He's had, he's got a real story for some struggle. He struggled with his uh, childhood. Certain environment that he grew up in wasn't the most ideal environment, but he managed to get involved himself involved in the music industry, and that's something he is passionate about. But he struggled to find a business that he can create in the short term that will earn him an income. So he's decided to set up a business that doesn't revolve around something he's passionate about, but something he enjoys slightly. So he's decided to set up a digital marketing agency. So he provides uh, lead generation, he provides sales transformations, and he provides social media marketing. But the fun thing is, the interesting thing here is, he has no experience in lead generation, he has no experience in sales transformation, and no experience in social media marketing. So, you know, people that I've spoken to are like, well, how is he going to do it then? Who's going to hire him? But he can offer these services and he can outsource that work to other professionals. So let's say you wanted to hire a social media marketer. So you go and pay him, I don't know, $1,000. And then he goes and pays someone $800 to go and do the work for you. So he's basically built his own team of people that can do all of these things. And you're just paying him a slight bit extra but you don't know he's outsourcing it, but you're paying him a slight bit extra for basically he's done all the work. He's done the marketing. He's going to do the customer support. Uh, he's going to do the follow-ups. Anybody can set that up. Anybody can set it up. You know, you can go on freelancer.com or upwork.com and you can hire somebody to do social media marketing or lead generation or sales transformations within one hour. And that will earn him a very nice income, five figures minimum per month. Uh, that he can then use to sustain his lifestyle while he's building his music career. Wow, thank you so much, John, for your time. I've learned a lot from you, and uh, I'm hoping that a lot of people, even myself, could um, you know, jump in on your program and learn more about starting a business. That would be amazing. I would love that. Yes. Thank you so much for your no time. No problem. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I am eternally grateful for your time, your love, and contributions. You mean a lot to me. Thank you once again for listening and sharing with your loved ones. Don't forget to subscribe and follow this journey on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and other platforms in the description. Stay blessed.